There we go. All right. Welcome to the University of Oklahoma. My name's Stephanie Pilot. I'm the director of the Division of Architecture here at OU. And I want to thank you all for making the trip um, all the way here to Norman, Oklahoma. I also want to thank the Fred Jones Jr. Museum of Art for hosting us and our amazing exhibition, which you will get to see later today. And I want to thank our conference organizers. Professor Tony Criccio and Dr. Angela Pearson did an incredible job of organizing all of this. Um, and they had the assistance of our incredible staff, Ginger Murray in the back there, Jerry Puckett also back here, Peter Tran, Camille Germany, and as well as our students, uh, Alicia Buffington, Kimberly Huff, Brescia Crawford, Amanda Young, Catherine Young, John King, Haley Sandal, Bree Rhodes, Christy Saliba, Avery Hightower, and Jacob Cullum. So give me a, a little bit of help in thanking all these amazing people. I also want to take a moment to remind everyone to turn your phones off. Now is the moment to do that. And I'm going to begin by introducing a student, Alicia Buffington. Alicia is a fifth year architecture student here at the University of Oklahoma. She's a Bruce Groff Chair of Creative Architecture Assistant and president of the OU chapter of the National Organization of Minority Architecture Students. Alicia is a member of the Absentee Shawnee and the Kickapoo Tribes. And Alicia will offer us a land acknowledgement this morning. Alicia, please join us. Long before the University of Oklahoma was established, the land on which the university now resides was a traditional home of the Hassanai, Caddo Nation, and the Kittakadish, Wichita, and affiliated tribes. We acknowledge the territory once also served as a hunting ground, trade exchange point, and migration route for the Apache, Comanche, Kiowa, and Osage nations. Today, 39 tribal nations dwell in the state of Oklahoma as a result of settler and colonial policies that were designed to assimilate Native people. The University of Oklahoma recognizes the historical connection our university has with its indigenous community. We acknowledge, honor, and respect the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this land. We fully recognize, support, and advocate for the sovereign rights of all of Oklahoma's 39 tribal nations. This acknowledgement is aligned with our university's core value of creating a diverse and inclusive community. It is our institutional responsibility to recognize and acknowledge the people, culture, and history that make up our entire OU community. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. I'd now like to introduce Asher Stevens. Asher Stevens Tickman is a senior anthropology and international development student here at OU. He's currently serving as Mr. Indian 2019-2020. He is an enrolled citizen of the Wichita and affiliated tribes, as well as a native Hawaiian. Through his title as Mr. Indian OU, Asher has worked to increase acceptance of and acknowledgement of intersectional identities within the native community. The song he will offer us today Hawaii Aloha, was written by Reverend Lorenzo Lyons and holds high esteem in the native Hawaiian community as a song associated with Hawaiian sovereignty. He offers this song to acknowledge the sovereignty of the native people of this land and beyond. Please help me welcome Asher. song today. Uh, it's a very important song to me and my people, the Kanaka, Kanaka Maoli of Hawaii. And uh, just please just be there with an uh, open heart and accept what the song has to say. Oh, uh -huh. 
Thank you, Asher. That was really beautiful. I'd now like to introduce our dean, Hans Bootser. Hans and his wife and partner, Tori Bootser, designed one of our most iconic public places created in his generation in Oklahoma City. That's the Oklahoma City National Memorial. They then followed that up with other landmark projects like the exquisite Oklahoma City Skydance Bridge, which you may have driven under if you came in from the airport. Hans's fingerprints are all over the transformation that has occurred in Oklahoma City in the last 20 years. And he is going to share a little bit of background about our school and about what motivated this conference here today. Hans, please join us. Thank you, Stephanie, and good morning. Welcome. Uh, it's already been a very impactful few minutes here. Um, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful way to, to remember uh, the, our roots here, what anchors us to this land. I, I, I thank you, Alicia, uh, as well as uh, this powerful morning tribute. Thank you all for joining. Uh, this conference was motivated uh, by our own research, which started uh, four years ago. Four years ago at the time I took the dean position. And it's a research into the radical design pedagogy born here at OU in mid-century. Later today, I hope you will take a time to look at the Renegades exhibit uh, next door here, which is a, a culmination of some of that work. Uh, that work involved uh, and continues to involve over 100 faculty, students, staff, and other supporters. But before we launch into uh, the rest of uh, the morning's presentations, I'd like to take a moment and introduce you to a bit a brief history of the American School. In 1970, New York Times critic Ada Louise Huxtable implored her visitors, her readers, excuse me, to visit an exhibition of the work of Bruce Goff, writing, and I quote, go to the league, gentlemen and ladies, even if those gold and silver presentation boards and houses like starfish, Viking ships, and teepees give you fits. If you can shed the eugenically frightening New, York, New England, Calvinist, Harvard, Bauhaus intellectual frigidity, if you can suppress a reaction to some obviously homegrown corn, there is an artist here. There is a consistent statement of art and purpose a sensitivity to the land, a last stand half, half triumph of the romantic individualist in a world that is forcing the architect to conform increasingly to standardized formulas and business practices, end quote. By 1970, Bruce Goff was known for projects like the Ford House in Illinois, projects that combined organic forms with local and ready-made materials. In this case, we saw Quonset hut ribs. He had become known for creating otherworldly interiors, rooms like hanging pods, interior fountains and gardens, homes with a strong connection to the natural environment. Goff was also a teacher. As chairman of the University of Oklahoma School of Architecture in the 1950s, he developed a radically original approach to teaching. Goff never went to architecture school, so he didn't know and didn't follow an existing model. 
Instead, he believed the job of a teacher was to bring out the individual creativity of each and individual student. This was in direct opposition to most other pedagogical models at the time, which promoted a master-disciple relationship between teacher and student. Goff recruited faculty, including Mendel Glickman, best known as Frank Lloyd Wright's structural engineer, and Herb Green, Elizabeth Bauer Mach, Faye Jones, and others. Together, they developed a curriculum grounded not in a style, but rather in this belief of the creative potential of each individual. And in sincere response to people, place, time, materials, and spirit, in answer to this approach, students came from around the world to study at OU under Goff and his cadre of faculty from Japan, Canada, Peru, Greece, and beyond. Architect Donald McDonald later described what developed at OU as the American School. This school was a place like no other. Rick Hunter, an OU alum, described what it was like to arrive at this strange school in the 1940s. He wrote, I arrived at the university, and I walked into this war barracks building on the North Campus, and I was just blown away. I was blown away by the interior and what he had done with strings and painting things black and all this incredible work up on the walls by students. I think probably within about five seconds, I had decided this is where I have to come. As Donald McDonald continued to describe, at OU there emerged, quote, a truly American ethic, which is being formulated without the usual influence of the European or Asian architectural forms and methodologies common on the East and West Coasts of the United States. The radical creativity of the American school students and practitioners doesn't fit neatly into histories that tra seek to trace cultural developments back to European origins. Susan King, the curator of an American school exhibition at the AA in London, explained this oversight in the history books. Quote, in the minds of the Ivy Leaguers and big city critics, the jump was from Beaux-Arts to Bauhaus because it allowed them to retain their umbilical cord to Europe. The American school cut that umbilical cord. End quote. The University of Oklahoma School of Architecture stood apart from the Beaux-Arts and Bauhaus and developed an original and authentically American approach to architecture and pedagogy. The OU faculty rejected the rote copying of classical architecture as well as the abstract minimalist approach popular elsewhere. Students were taught to look to sources beyond the accepted canon of Western architecture and to find inspiration in everyday objects, the natural landscape, and non-Western cultures, such as the designs of the Native Americans here on local soil. While OU students developed a keen awareness of global architectural history, when they arrived in the design studio, they were instructed, do not try to remember. Do not begin with classical column capitals and proportional systems or modernist pelotes or grids. Do not begin by imitating the designs of your instructor. Do not arrive at the beginning with the end already in mind. Instead, begin fresh. Begin with the natural context, the slope of the land, the quality of the light, and the local materials. Be earnest in attempting to respond to the program. Sincerely listen to the needs and desires of your client. Most importantly, begin by trusting your own creative instincts. Today, we affectionately refer to the practitioners who emerged from this American School of Architecture as renegades. And here at OU, we invite you to shed any lingering intellectual frigidity and open your mind to the American School. Thank you. <laughs>